Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair and a review of the Thermal Master P2. So this is a thermal camera, Thermal Master technology. Okay. It proudly claims to be the world's second smallest thermal camera. <laughs> yeah, I mean, why not? People are proud to get silver medals in the Olympics when they were just runners up or they lost, basically. Yeah, so world's second smallest thermal camera. What attracted me to this, apart from it being a nice price, this has a 15 times digital zoom. Thermal Master sent me this to review, so this is a review sample, I didn't pay for this. But I'm not being paid to make this review, so this is my honest opinion of this. Let's have a look at this, let's see if there is some software we can run on a PC. Obviously it works on the phone, Android. And let's compare this with my thermal camera built into the multimeter, the one I normally use because it's just so convenient, yeah? Let's see how well this works in comparison. And I'm very interested to see if this 15 times digital zoom is of use when we're actually working on circuit boards or will we lose a lot of resolution so effectively we can't really zoom in on small components. Well, we're going to find out, so let's get this opened up. But while I'm doing that, let's have a look to see how much this actually costs. And here we have it. I'm on thermalmaster.com. Thermal Master P2, world's second smallest thermal camera. Price $249. So high resolution thermal cameras have definitely come down in price over the last couple of years. That is very competitive, I would say. 15 times zoom, which we know about. That's what I'm very interested yeah. in. We have P2 versus other. And yes, we can run this on a tablet, on a computer, or on a smartphone. Okay, let's give it a go. Okay, what do we have? Well, of course, we have the USB connector. Okay, male to female, you see on here. Quick start guide, quite a thick book for a quick start guide. Lots of different languages, I would say in here, okay. And the camera, and a nice little holder. So this is obviously designed to go onto a key fob or something like that. Push the button in, and it ejects. That is quite secure, actually. I mean, I have to press this firmly to open it, okay. And here is our camera. I'll connect this to my phone and then let's put it through its paces. Okay, I've downloaded the app. I can plug this directly into my phone or I can use this extension lead. I'll probably find this easier. So let's plug it in. Choose an app, Temp Master. Okay. Always. Camera. So it's connected, it says it's connected. Quick start guide, tech support, I have a few things come up here, okay. It's asking for permissions, okay. Yes. Allow it to take pictures while using the app. Allow it to access photos and videos. There's nothing secret on here, okay, so that's fine. Right. So, yeah, we have our thermal camera. You can see it's definitely working. Okay, I think I need to change some of the settings, in particular the palette, the colours, okay. Let's go with 
iron red. Yeah, this is like the normal sort of thing we have. Okay, so we can see we have a zoom on this straight away. I'll just show you. We have uh, two times. And we have some nice effects here. Rainbow, I quite like that one. It passes the fingerprint test, so you see it leaves a nice trace there behind me. Okay, yeah, good thermal camera. I'm just moving this around just to have a look on the bench at the moment. The thing there glowing with the red rectangle, that is my soldiery station or one of them. We have the zoom facility, you see that? Yeah. Just drag up to 15 times, so that this is the zoom facility mentions. What we really would like to do is to see how that works on a PCB. So let's get a motherboard powered up and let's have a very close look at it. Okay, so here is the motherboard. We'll just start it. Let's see what we can see. Yeah, the focal point is quite a way away, so I'm about, well, that far from here to here, I don't know, six inches or something, yeah. That's my phone. You can't hold it closer than that, it doesn't focus closer than that. If you see I'm on the chip here, for example, I have to hold it some way away from that i'll just try to get us all into the picture there you go you can see a bit better so i quite like this it's changing you see in the little like the thumbnail thing here you get like a, a preview of what it looks like <laughs> that's interesting okay but what you can't do is get close in onto components with this one if I get it so it's focused here, okay, and then try and zoom in. So I get the focus about there. Although you can zoom in, you don't really have the resolution. Okay. There's nothing on here, just making sure I haven't left something on, I haven't. So Thermal Master asked me if I would make a comparison between this and the multimeter I normally use. I'm just looking here now, I can see the legs of components, I can see them but they're kind of like... Well, let me show you the other one and then you'll see the difference, yeah? So even when zooming in. And also I've noticed when you zoom in, you can't move the image, yeah? It just stays fixed. I've obviously chosen a different thing there. I'll just try. Actually, we'll try a different one to see if that helps as well. I can see the small components now at the bottom. You can see them there. Let's try and zoom in on that. Yeah. You can't. Really, you can't. Okay. Right, let's compare that with the one on the multimeter that I normally use. I mean, I can see them. But I want to see how that compares with the camera I normally use. This is my multimeter ET13S with built-in thermal camera. Okay. Just power this up and let's have a look at the same motherboard and see what we can see. Okay. So, the problem with this is reflection. Obviously, the other one didn't have because my phone has a very dark screen, but I'm sure you can see straight away as I can actually see all the very small components on here let's come down to this bit here so I have let me just find it yeah something there 
you see those components in front of the ship let me just zoom in a little bit for you on my camera okay so I can see there that there were some resistors right in front of the chip here I can put the graphical over there about 46 degrees you see them lit up okay there's a couple more here let's compare that with the other one okay let's have a look well you can see the ones in front that were glowing can you see them like a little thing there so you can see it but it doesn't have the sharpness of the other one if i move it further away so i'm in focus and then try to zoom in again you can see it but it doesn't have the resolution of the other one uh, again i think just down here this is where i had some more components that look warm zoom in a bit you see here okay there's something here that's hot again i'll move away till it's in focus yeah you can see clearly that is hot that's uh this one let's go back to the other camera yeah look there so we clearly have a much higher resolution image with this one again that's the ones in front and then this is where i could see something else on the other one as well okay now this has the macro lens i'm going to take the macro lens off and let's make a comparison again so this is without the macro lens and still clearly we can see it's not so good now i'm sure you can see the difference between having and not having the macro lens on uh, this is without this is with yeah huge difference okay but even without the macro lens this is actually getting a better image than the p2 so you can see guys this is not a bad thermal camera it's just more suited to looking at things which are further away so if you're working on things like aircon and boilers and car engines and stuff this with the zoom i'm sure works just fine but it isn't so suited to what i'm doing and what you guys are probably doing which is electronics repair to component level and for that the tooltop et13s stands out i had a look so with the et13s and the macro lens was coming in at about 195 euros so it's actually cheaper and i'd have to say better for that purpose okay i've reviewed this then in the way i was asked to review it which was specifically to make a comparison with my tooltop et13s and i have to say for the work i'm doing and i'm sure you guys will agree it just worked better it was just better suited at that even without the macro lens on it which reduces the price by another what, 22 euros it was better and with the macro lens on it was outstanding that's probably why this doesn't work so well because obviously i am doing very close up repair okay well i hope you consider that to be a balanced review i'm not saying which is good or bad i'm more saying that they're probably suited for different purposes i'd be interested to know what you guys have get into the comments down there yeah let me know and i also look forward to seeing you all again soon on learning electronics repair ciao for now guys